All right, yeah, uh, let's get started. All right, so hi everyone. Thank you for coming to the Advancing Amazon's Micro Fulfillment Breakout Room. We're very excited to have you here. On our team this year, we're Ali, Eamon, Naomi, Nathan, Sean, and I, Sabrina. If you have any questions at all during this presentation, feel free to write them in the Zoom chat and one of these wonderful people will answer them for you. Before we start, just wanna give a quick thank you to our faculty advisor, our liaison and our subject matter experts for all of their help and guidance during this project. So first, what is micro fulfillment? Micro fulfillment is essentially the decentralization of Amazon's fulfillment centers. Amazon centers are currently very large and centralized. You can store a lot of things in them, but this means the items have to be shipped over large distances to get to you. Deliveries then have to happen on an order of days. One potential avenue to overcome this limit in delivery is micro fulfillment, where you could have the orders fulfilled at smaller, more local centers, and deliveries could happen in a matter of hours. So how would these micro fulfillment centers work? In these new types of centers, you would have a much smaller team of robots find items in a more compact warehouse. Then you would have picking, sorting, and packing all done at one station rather than in separate stations as it's done currently in fulfillment centers. Lastly, orders would be delivered immediately rather than having to go through a mail carrier. We were tasked with exploring this new fulfillment paradigm. To accomplish this, we split the problem up and the team to work on two different sections, algorithms, which focus on how the robots can be managed in a center like this, and workstation, which explores how we can combine all of these different steps into one st workstation. I'll be presenting on the algorithm side. Let's give you a little bit of background. How is an item that you order retrieved? At a high level, after you place an order for an item, the item, the item is located somewhere in that warehouse. Then we have to assign a robot to go pick it up and tell it how to get there. Both types of fulfillment centers have something, some version of this. But the question is, how does retrieving an item look differently in current fulfillment centers compared to micro fulfillment centers? In current centers, you have a very large flat space with numbers of robots in the thousands. In a micro fulfillment center, you would have a much smaller and compact space where you might have items stored on different floors rather than one flat area and the numbers of robots would be more in the dozens. Oh wait, actually, sorry, go back. Um, a little bit more context here. In the current centers, oh, sorry, not go back on the slides, just, yes. Thank you, sorry. In the current centers, there's just a lot more variables going on. You have more robots, more space, more items. Making smart decisions about how you're gonna send the robots to get your items, it's a complex problem, and it just gets worse when you have all of these variables. In a smaller space, you have less robots, less items. It just takes less computational power and time to make smart decisions. Options that aren't feasible in current fulfillment centers could be feasible here. So how can we make smart decisions about item retrieval? There are two main strategies that we explored, immediate assignment and sequence assignment. In immediate assignment, a robot is only assigned the immediate next spin to get versus in sequential assignment, you plan for the future bins to get as well. Both of these have their pros and cons. For example, immediate assignment is a little more flexible versus sequence assignment, you can optimize for moves in the future. We explored a whole bunch of different algorithms in both of these uh, strategies, and we'll show you a video of our simulation of how we tested these out. So in this video of a possible layout of a micro fulfillment center, specifically the robot section, um, you can see how like a little bit of the robots moving around to give you size a sense of scale. This example would be roughly the size of like a three story house. As you guys can see from the legend, the little circles are the robots moving around and the squares are the bins that contain the items. You can see in this configuration that some of the bins are placed behind others. So that means you have to move one of the bins in front to access the one in the back. All of these robots are trying to get a bin and bring it over to a W that represents a workstation where a human worker would pick out an item. There are also elevators here where the robots can move between the floors to get items that are located on different levels. We ran a whole bunch of simulations kind of like this, different parameters, different strategies for retrieving bins, and we learned a couple of things. So what did we learn? 
The frequency of recalculating is a lot more important than the choice of algorithm for making these smart decisions. The more frequently we told robots to reconsider their decisions, the better the efficiency of the warehouse, and this was a much larger factor than any individual choice between the algorithms. Another thing that we learned is that the different ways that robots would interact with each other needs to be considered in decision making. For example, if a robot is trying to access a bin behind another bin, should it have one robot help move it or should it do it itself? Lots of questions in this space. Last one I'll call out is that the complexity of the fulfillment center is very large and there's numerous ways to optimize its efficiency. We only focus on investigating a few aspects of this potential type of new center, but there are so many more factors that could have a large influence. And now I'll hand it over to the workstation team. All right. Um, in our sub team, we were addressing the next stage in the micro fulfillment process, which is what happens once a robot carrying items gets to a human worker to be sent out to the customer. We need to design a work area that will let people take items from the robots, sort them, and package them for delivery all in one place. We also needed it to keep the interaction between humans and robots completely safe and try to make each task in the process as easy as possible. Uh, to design a station that did all of those things, we had to learn a lot. The first area we wanted to look into was what features could we adapt or borrow from workstations that already exist. The tasks done at our workstation are pretty similar to those done at a large retail store uh, checkout counter. So uh, we wanted to know, <clears throat> sorry, we wanted to know why are those stations the way they are? What are their most important features and what are their weaknesses? We also needed to know what the differences between our system and those systems are uh, because there might be differences that give us uh, freedom to make decisions and improve compared to those systems. Uh, also, because this is a collaborative robotics workstation, we had to think very carefully about the interaction between robots and humans. It's important that you prioritize the time of the human over the robot because the person is the more skilled part of the system and the robot is a tool for them. So we needed to figure out a workflow that would use the human's time as efficiently as possible. Finally, and most importantly, we needed to know how to make a workstation that encourages a physically healthy workflow. A shift doing any physical task for a long time becomes somewhat taxing over a long period. So the question is, how can we design a workstation that minimizes this as much as possible? So how did we go about that? To answer those questions and arrive at a final design, we started with research, which we did by visiting stores and interviewing people that worked at them about their work areas, as well as talking to ergonomics experts. Then we moved on to a long ideation phase where we tried to diverge from existing designs as much as possible and look at as many high level designs as we could. We evaluated about 80 designs and eventually converged on two that we thought were promising, which we prototyped at full scale and tested in person for ergonomics and throughput. This led us to one overall design, which we then spent several weeks developing in detail in a CAD model on the computer, which meant we needed to figure out every component that workers would need to do their tasks and figure out how all of them would fit into our limited space. So here are a few of the, uh, the lessons that we learned from this that uh, might be interesting to go through. <clears throat> one, orders can be packed by multiple stations in parallel. In a uh, store with customers, uh, each workstation that uh, identifies and packages items has to do each item sequentially for one order at a time. In our system, because it's managed by robots and it's not, and the customers are not actually there, you can spread one order out among multiple workstations, which lets you always choose the closest or most efficient uh, station for a robot to go to. We also tested some stations that had an assembly line style system with uh, multiple workers doing different stages in the process. And we eventually determined that that wasn't helpful in this case because there was too much variation in how long different items took to uh, pick up and find and package, which meant that you always had people waiting for other people, which is not a pleasant working, not a pleasant way to work and also wastes a lot of humans time. And then finally, uh, we found that we had to make a lot of uh, 
design decisions to make sure that our workstation was adaptable for diverse workers, meaning different people of different heights, weights, and physical abilities. Um, there was no way to make one design that would accommodate everyone. So we needed to build in some flexibility to accommodate that. Uh, we have now uh, handed off our final workstation design proposal and our simulation and findings about algorithms to Amazon, and we're really excited to see what comes of them. And uh, we would now love to take some questions or, or just talk in more depth about any of these topics. So uh, what do you guys want to hear? Hey, Dean, so, this is Anil. I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. uh, my question is, what, did, have you guys looked into any of the ways that micro-fulfillment uh, negatively impacts Amazon's like work or work structure? Like, does having smaller, more distributed spaces lead to uh, any increase in their operating costs or transportation costs uh, or anything like that? No, we we have not. I'm sure Amazon has. Uh, I think in general, it probably is very expensive to run, but is is worth it is the impression that we've got. I think also uh, part of our work gives a better view as to what the system could look like in the future, which allows for them um, to better estimate what their costs would look like if they were to implement it in the future. Um, so it's pretty much still conceptual work. They're still figuring out what it would look like to run micro fulfillment centers and how that would impact their structure, um, which is why we were given this part of the project um, to kind of ideate, to think outside the box and consider um, non-conventional solutions to um, their problems. Cool, thank you. So I have a question. So for the simulation team, when you simulated this work for everything you had the robot do, did you uh, give it not only an average time, but some sort of statistics around that? Like on average, it's gonna be three seconds or 10 seconds, but then give standard deviation or decide what kind of statistics would each, each item um, take and how did you get that information if you use that? I think that our we determined our, our liaison told us that the robots move at about one have an acceleration of one meters per second squared. So we assumed that the robots would move at like one meter a second. Each of these grid spaces is one meter. So and because our simulation is like discrete with only time incrementing by one second, we just assume that the robots move at that like one grid space per second. And I don't, I, I, the only other part that has time in it is the how long the workstation team needs to, or how long a workstation person would need to pick the item. And we just assumed a constant four seconds because we thought that it was good enough for our purposes, but we would definitely add that statistic with like more time to get a more accurate result. What's your metric for saying that your combined workstation is better than the previous one? Like do you have non-value add time comparisons or? So there aren't any current uh, micro fulfillment stations that we were comparing against. Uh, so we were actually comparing against other ideas that, that we came up with. Um, so we were doing things like different time trials and things like that. Um, and so we actually replicated um, the order process and kind of came up with a mock uh, program that we would use that would tell us what, what items to pick. Uh, and so we actually used 3D models and compared times for different models to see which one would be more efficient. Um, and we were also able to evaluate ergonomics concerns as well. Um, you know, we didn't work on it for eight hours at a time, but we, we could start to see where some ergonomics issues would pop up as well. Um, so it really was that 3D modeling and comparing those two different stations that helped us there. I think also in comparison to existing systems, um, they just take up significantly more space than is allotted for a workstation in the 
Um, micro fulfillment centers, we just are physically constrained in that we cannot have separate workstations for picking items, sorting orders, and packing items. So because um, the structure is completely different, we just had to um, find a way to make it work. So there is no accurate um, comparison between the two since the spacing is just significantly different and limits like what the possibility is um, for how these workstations are set up. Did you guys work with any like industrial engineers to figure out footprint or like of your your setup and like looking at like number of steps needed to walk from to get from this to this or things like that? This is just like uh, no, we didn't work with any industrial engineers, uh, but yes, definitely number of footsteps and the amount of moving around within the station was one of the the big things that we were looking at. The whole the whole time we were looking at designs, and we actually came at that from more of an ergonomics uh, standpoint than from an industrial engineering standpoint. Um, so we reviewed a bunch of literature and uh, also talked to a couple of professionals uh, in the ergonomics field as well um, to learn more information about you know what is comfortable for for people working at workstations such as these, um, what are pain points, what we should look out for, uh, and so that guided a lot of our design as we were moving forward. Um, were you able to test like your algorithm with like different configurations of like the layout of like the first, second, third floors? Um, and were you able to like compare like how, like if there's like better strategies for a different configuration and like were you able to see like any key distinctions between them? So one thing that was very interesting for us to see is we did spend um, some time figuring out different layouts as in like more floors, more robots, wider area. And we got kind of the same results in that the algorithm choice itself didn't matter. In both cases, with bigger spaces, um, bigger or smaller spaces, you kind of saw that the algorithm choice kind of gave con relatively similar results between the choices between them, um, but only just varying the frequency of rec recalculation in both cases had a huge impact. But that is definitely something that if we had had more time, and this is also something we would want Amazon to look into is like configurations then that's different from these, like if the totes were in different spots or if the elevators were in different spots, things like that. Did this actually have three floors or is it just three floors and the robot needs to move up? Like, could you make a robot that actually can go up by itself and not have to go to an elevator? Like, like just certain. a really tall area? I'm not certain if we're allowed to talk about that. <laughs> That's on the edge. OK, I understand. Sorry. No, I'm. I'm that's a good question. Thank you. I'm just not sure. Well, say, grocery store least... picking is like that with people that go out and pick for grocery stores. It goes really high. Sorry if I interrupted someone. You're all good. I was going to say for the a theoretical setup that we, we were given for this layout uh, would not be possible. Um, yeah, that's end of thought. I just have one question. Did you make any assumptions about the ordering of how the products are stored? Uh, say, uh, in terms of uh, like the products most frequently ordered, uh, the less frequently ordered, and how did it affect your algorithm? Uh, we didn't on that one. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, we, for now, assumed that they were mostly randomly selected just because the overhead to potentially do that uh, would be very difficult. Um, so we wanted to start with the kind of worst case assumption where it wasn't organized at all. And then if it worked there, then hopefully as Amazon continued to improve, um, it would only make their algorithms run faster um, was, was our take on that. Uh, but with that, I think we're probably about out of time here. Uh, thank you all so much for coming uh, and really appreciate it.
Mm -hmm. We hope you enjoy the rest of the Scope Summit and check out the other team's presentations. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys so much for coming. Thank Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Uh, b- before we start the next presentation, uh, does someone on uh, on the team uh, know how to turn on the transcript? I'm, uh... I think it's already going. 